it's been well received by the audience. How does it feel? It feels great. <laughs> it feels superb. The trailer's uh, reaction is very good and the film's reaction is going to be 100 times more. I think uh, trailer is the first communication uh, in the business of cinema. And uh, it, it communicates what the film is about. And when uh, the trailer is received so well, uh, I think it's extremely heartening for the filmmakers because they can expect, uh, you know, more uh, pair of eyes uh, into the theatres. You both have worked together earlier. How different, uh, how different it was working for the Ghazi attack? Different in the sense, the screenplay was different, the story was different, the setup was different. We remained the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what do you want to say about it? Uh, I think uh, the earlier film that we uh, worked on was a comedy called Charlie's Chaurasi, and uh, it depicted s something completely different, and it, it, it was a different kind of entertainment. And uh, naturally, actors approach uh, uh, you know their characters and their stories. Uh, according to the characters and the story. So this was a different, as KK said, was a different story and a different character. So we approached it differently. Okay. You have completed almost 20 years in the industry with stupendous roles to remember. Uh, how does it feel? Today I'm feeling uh, very old because everyone is mentioning that I'm here for 20 years. Uh, so oh, that is one thing what I'm feeling. But I think uh, when I set out, uh, from Solapur, I, films were never, uh, you know, on my agenda. But uh, I just set out to act, and I'm still acting for last 15 years in films. So I'm happy about it, really happy. Okay. Share experience working for the Ghazi. Uh, was it challenging emotionally as well as physically? Uh, it was interesting. Uh, challenging is for those, those who don't have the caliber. We, I think we have it. So uh, we, we, either we decide on things based on whether it's interesting or uninteresting. So for me, um, it was an ex interesting journey, uh, just to understand uh, the trials and tribulations of all these people, the soldiers who were there in, uh, in, in the submarine, the way they lived, the way they must have um, conducted themselves over a period of so many days in that little space with the constant threat of the enemy having a, a superior machin machinery and superior submarine with them is quite a task. So I think uh, our respect for our soldiers grew uh, many, many fold. Uh, did you feel patriotic or some sort of strong feelings while shooting for the film or a scene? Uh, as actors, it is our duty to uh, read the scene and do it uh, the way our director wants it. It is not our duty to have our own emotions come in between uh, anything. So uh, our duty is to create emotions for the people who are watching it. So uh, it's work, uh, I guess, um, for actors. And we were working and working very hard because this film needed that, to work very hard. Everyone, not only actors, but the technicians, director, everyone. And uh, I'm really proud that we could uh, pull this through because this was a very difficult, uh, you know, uh, film. And uh, if, uh, you know, the Ghazi attack is uh, received well by people, I think more and more young filmmakers would come forward to uh, make such interesting films. Uh, and I think that would be the biggest achievement uh, of the success of the Ghazi attack. Mm. Repeat the question again. <laughs> the question was: Did you feel patriotic or some sort of feelings uh, while shooting the, for the uh, film? Yeah, when I saw the film, ultimately, mm -hmm. uh, we all felt very patriotic. Um, see, it's a different experience uh, while shooting for a film. We are absolute thorough professionals, so it's possible that I'm playing an, a non-patriotic role. Then what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it's not nothing to do with our personal feelings and emotions. Uh, we inherently are patriotic any which way. It's just that uh, when you see a film and you, you know that you're a part of a film like this, even if you are not the patriotic kinds in the film, you will still feel patriotic. So uh, when we saw the film ultimately, uh, each one of us uh, felt very proud of being associated with a film like this. At the same time, uh, 
paying a tribute to our so soldiers who are, are completely unsung. Um, how was your experience working with late Om Puri, sir? Uh, Om Puri, uh, sir, mm, his work speaks for himself. He, he's, he's a how was your experience? Uh, you can't term it as, as experience. It's a lifetime. Uh, his experience is, we have, at least we actors, uh, have been experiencing him through his work throughout our lives. He's been one of the sources of inspiration for people like us. So uh, he was a big, big, uh, very big actor, uh, though not given his due in his lifetime. But I think he was a colossal uh, figure as far as acting is concerned. And you, sir? I did not have a scene with him in this film. Uh, yeah. Um. Do you think Bollywood is waking up to unconventional actors? Don't ask me, I'll get out of my mouth. No, uh, unconventional means what? I don't know. I think acting um, is only one kind. What is, ha what is most popular is unconventional. So what do I do to that? You know? So, uh, yeah, so con unconventional, I don't know what it, how does it define, what is unconventional, I don't know. Not acting, hamming is un unconventional, mm -hmm. then, uh, then it might be true that uh, it's doing a lot of business. Oh. Um, a lot of hamming, a lot of stuff which is uh, jingoistic and, uh, and uh, what not. I mean, faking it is happening, which is earning a lot of business, which is fine. Uh, kudos to them. Uh, but we have followed a particular uh, principle of, of performing, where there's something called a truth of everything that you do. Uh, if that is not there, of course, then you can always loot a bank and make money, so you can become a billionaire, so it doesn't matter. So, but if you want to run a bank properly and then make money, it's a difficult job. It's not so easy. So, uh, you need to uh, differentiate between what is conventional and unconventional, I don't know. All I know is that there's one way of approaching things, which is uh, to be truthful to that and try and uh, immerse yourself in that and then try and take out the best possible thing. You would never have a diamond if so much of... Uh, and, and you'd never have a diamond if people refuse to really polish it well and you know take out the charcoal, take out everything else and make it shiny. And so it's a it's whole process. So if as long as you believe in that, I don't know whether that's conventional or unconventional. So I would See, say that truth is what we believe in. Uh, you take example of all our superstars. Dilip Sahab mm -hmm. was said he was unconventional. The way he spoke, yeah. they said, he was completely unconventional. Rajesh Khanna sahab, when he came uh, on the background of Devanand, Raj Kapoor, and all that romantic, you know, that, that kind of cinema, they said Rajesh Khanna, hero banega. He was completely unconventional with his face and his looks. Amit ji, Amitabh Bachchan came, he's unconventional height, unconventional voice, un he was rejected uh, when he went for the audition in, uh, in a radio station. And these people made those unconventions the conventions. So I think we have to be uh, very careful when we say unconventional because uh, the definition of unconvention uh, keeps on changing. And the people who are unconventional change it. Okay, that was really good. How was your experience working with the director? Sankalp is uh, an engineer. Uh, basically by profession and uh, this is his first film he when he wrote the script he built an entire submarine in his garage uh, uh, to the scale uh, and uh, that is how uh, I mean well he knows uh, submarine and the technicalities of the film that he is making and I think it is extremely heartening uh, that such young filmmakers are coming and they are making such unconventional films and there are now producers and presenters who are there to support, uh, you know, uh, these kind of films. So I think that Sankalp is an example of uh, the young directors who want to tell the story that they want to tell. Same editor, because I think um, uh, here is a young man who was so immersed in his work that everything about the submarine, everything about the command chain system, etc., etc. He was so thorough about it that we didn't have to do much of work. We just had to uh, look at him uh, for uh, whatever is 
um, there in the rule book, etc., etc. So he was a completely thorough. So for us, that aspect of research was uh, only sankal, and we used to just approach him for whatever research material that we required. Plus the drama aspect, we used to all work it out together. Uh, so it, the job became much easier because of a director like Sankal there. The success of films like Dangal, Pink and Neerja proved that audiences prefer, uh, prefer content-oriented films over the films with higher box office collections. What do you have to say about it? Uh, there are many types of films that are being made and they will always be made uh, in India. So I don't think that you just uh, need to judge a complete business of cinema dependent on you know just what has happened in last six months. So I think we should not be doing that and uh, there is scope for every kind of film in this country because there is uh, there are those many uh, kind of people uh, staying here uh, with different backgrounds altogether educational social economical backgrounds and that is what uh, we as uh, you know people from the business of cinema should understand and should respect all kinds of films thank you and yeah but yeah it's very heartening to know that, that these films have done very well and hats off to amir for dangal because i think um, when I saw the film, I, I personally felt very proud. I just felt that, not because of the sport in it, I just felt that for a mainstream um, superstar to never ever misuse his stardom is a great achievement. Amir is one such example, shining example of our industry, um, where, wherein he's never misused his stardom. He's used his stardom uh, with a lot of integrity and responsibility be it Rangde Basanti, be it any other film that he's done. You watch his films and you'll know that here is a man who's legitimately a star of a country. The rest is all hummock. So I think Amir Khan salute to him. I think uh, there's zero narcissism. He could have easily plastered posters all over the country with the six-pack abs which he had in the film. He didn't do that. He was an old man sitting there with his two daughters. That requires guts as a star. That requires inherent security of the fact that I will not be rejected because I am doing a film which is supposed to be a film and a piece of cinema and not just three days business. I personally believe that three days business, whatever are, are, is being done in today, can never uh, be for posterity. It, can, it is a hit and run case in which there's a packaging, certain presentation of things and certain things put together. Three days business, the films are not cinema, cannot be cinema. Cinema has to be, the intention has to be for posterity. If that happens, um, truly our cinema in all, in large proportions will start evolving. Because what is happening is when we say that Garibi Hatao as a major principle, you should, what about the poverty of cinema? Don't you want to eradicate that? Don't you want to educate people on cinema? So if you keep doling out just because of Garib hai, usko gandhi roti de do, wo khush hai, iska matlab ye nahi hai ki uh, you keep doling out that trash to people and give them that opium, that drug which they are which is actually spoiling their health as far as cinema is concerned. But you keep giving them and make your money and make your bungalows and make your cars and uh, uh, forget the fact that Garibi Hatao in cinema doesn't exist. It exists. You have to educate people. S films like Dangal or uh, Rajkumar Hirani's film, these are films which, which give you examples of the fact that you can make a lot of money by content. Content is not poison. You, people have given more business to Dangal than any other, any other film uh, in the recent past. Why is it so? You can't say that, oh, audiences don't want that. No, it's not possible. Because Amir Khan has shown the way, Raju Irani has shown the way, that in mainstream cinema you can have content and yet make a piece of cinema and yet have the business to it and make lots of money. So I don't know why people are not following that track. Because uh, nowhere has it shown that, oh, people are rejecting these films. No, they are loving it. Tell us about your future projects. Um, I'm doing a film called Vodka Diaries after this. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, and your other, sir? I am doing a film called Pranam uh, with Rajiv Khandelwal and another film called Vash with uh, Siddharth, my Rangde Basanti co star. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. So, can we do that? Uh, Hi, uh, this is Atul Gulkarni. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, and this is KK Menon. And you're watching us on VOC, which is Business of Cinema. Do watch it. Thank you, sir. I am Manmi from Hi. Business of Cinema, VOC. Hmm. Uh, my first question is for both uh, of you. Can you just keep it quiet, please, in the back? Thank you. Thanks. Uh, 
uh, the trailer of the film has been well received by the audience how does it feel a very satisfying first because obviously we set out to do something new and unique and interesting and and we did it for the people who like it and we are very very happy with the response same here when uh, your experimentation or your hard work is uh, appreciated and approved by the audience it feels nice so who will say that so did you expect her not to feel happy about yeah, it <laughs> yeah 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 so that's why i feel happy so yeah okay tapsi this question is for you pink baby the gas attack running shadi.com and naam shabana you have been doing some more incredible roles what are your criteria when you pick those roles i pick the directors most of the times because i feel a direct a good director can make an average film also really good and then comes the script and my role that's as simple as that and i've not reached a position where i can say okay you make a film for me or you make a film for me so i just choose from whatever options i get i just choose from the best out of that uh, rana uh, you were shooting for bahubali and the gazi attack at the same time right. was it challenging to move from one role to another well, it is it is a little bit because both are very character specific uh, bahubali is a film it's a war film it's a it's a medieval war film where i play warlord and i kill bison with my bare hands and things like that so i need to look the part and this is obviously a uh, uh, see it's it's based off a true event though it's a fictional tale in its form the characters are real the they at least want to be you want to make the audience feel that most of this actually actually happened and uh, so there's a brief of how a submariner is how a naval officer is there's a sense of discipline there's a sense of i mean if it's a body it's it's a sense of being more agile more athletic in form so which is what i did for this film so yes but the bigger problem was to get back to bahubali had to put that all back on so that was a problem uh Tapsi, you have a small part in the trailer. Not much been has been revealed. Hmm. Can you share about your role in the film? So I play uh, my character's name is Ananya. I play a Bangladeshi refugee. So this incident, when it happened in 1971, is the same year Bangladesh was formed. From East Pakistan, it became Bangladesh. So that's why my character, like the, we we try to incorporate that fact also in the film. And my so hence my character is from that part of the world, that part of the land. and uh, she is a refugee so she has seen her family uh, getting killed in front of her own eyes so the, the only thing she is left with is herself and she wants to really live and it's not like she's given up on life so she she saves herself out of it and runs away and uh, she happens to come across this ac big accident and these uh, naval officers save her from that and get her into the submarine so you'll see me doing that So as Ananya, physically and <coughs> how challenging the role was. See, physically, uh, not that much, frankly speaking, because uh, I was in, inside the submarine most of the time, just seeing whatever is happening or just being a part of the whole drama that was happening inside the submarine. But uh, mentally, little bit, because uh, see, this, this character has seen so much happen in front of her eyes, uh, but still she has not given up on life. You have to be really strong from inside. You might just look that you've. You, you you just lost everything from outside but inside the you you're extremely strong that's why you can probably still stay alive and be there in spite of losing everything in your life uh, rana you play the role of commander arjun verma in film how was your experience well play, when you play anything which is associated with any armed forces that you have uh, so obviously there will be a certain sense of uh, righteousness or discipline and patriotism and all of those that come in in very truthful very uh less emotional in terms of reactions and reacting to situations because obviously you're commanding a certain army at a, at, a, at a very crucial point yeah in in, in life itself it's between life and death that you play so i mean it's, it's all of those you'll have every line of yours is very measured very correct it's not uh, there's no loose talk there'll be no randomness in uh, in in character or any kind of fluctuation okay so how was your experience working with tapsi Well, obviously, it's always like this is the third film that I've been together with her. Uh, whether it's I did a Tamil film before, I did Baby before, and, and somebody I've known all my life. I've known her for the last seven, eight years, uh, from sh when she's become an actor. I mean, I'm very fond of her as a human being. I'm very fond of the kind of cinema that she does, and it's I'm very happy that she's part of this film, and uh, and and I'm very happy the, with the kind of work that she does. Uh, 
And how was your experience, Tarsi? Outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, one word is answered it, but Outstanding. then. Outstanding. <laughs> there's nothing else. Tarsi has nothing else to say on this. <laughs> no, I. Yeah, that's. The, we have worked together. We've been like, uh, funnily, we both started in Telugu, but never got to work in Telugu together. So this is the the film that we have uh, we are doing in Telugu and Hindi as well. So uh, nice to be in working on the set with him because I've known him as a person. Now I know him as an actor as also after this film working with him. Uh, after I would like to really do a full fledged film with him where I can like work with him for more number of days, but I really look forward to it. Uh, with the kind of track record we've had together with both the films that we've done before, I think he, we are again gonna nail it. Indeed, indeed. Rana is such a serious actor, even behind the cameras, or does he play pranks or fun? He is anything but serious behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you that. <laughs> How different it was working with Tapsi for this time, like in Gazi. Well, see, I mean, obviously, when you work with just putting her aside as a human, I mean, if you just look at her as an actor, she's a very fine actor. She's somebody who's evolved very, very beautifully over time, and uh, it always adds a lot to the film, lots to all of us, and uh, and this kind of support that a fine actor like her does accentuates what the scene is completely. So, what are your future plans, like after? The Gazi, what are your future plans? No, my future Project plans in, in life? Like, no, <laughs> not, 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 <laughs> obviously the life, <laughs> that, that's a part of your life, <laughs> your future projects. Right? Well, I have, I have a film called Bahubali that comes two months after Gazi does and, and yeah, I have a bunch more coming in this year. You have lots of films coming, coming up, so I'll talk about it as and when uh, yeah, they so come Every up. time it's in India, I'll keep coming back here and talking to you <laughs> and she'll be here talking to you all the time. Yes, for all my films. Uh, Rana, if audience will audience will get the answer that Katappa ne Bahubali ko kyun in Bahubali two. That's the whole reason we made this film. <laughs> so that it's the conclusion, it's the answer. Yes, they will. Okay, it's the final question. Uh, Tapsi, there's a matrimonial site Shadi.com, which has filed a case against your running Shadi.com to change the title. What's your take? It's done. The case is sorted. We have changed the name. Now it's running Shadi. Does it make a difference? <laughs> I don't think so. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.